Hi, it's Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper, back again. This is the second of a two-part series on tent history. In the first part, I talked about the differences between wall tents, cabin tents, and umbrella tents. Now in this part, I want to talk about bell tents, wedge tents, open front tents, dome tents, and tunnel tents. Bell tents are French-made tents that were initially developed for military housing. They were widely used during the American Civil War. They were large, non-freestanding canvas teepee-like tents that were supported by a single pole about 10 to 15 feet high. Before inserting the pole, the tent edges had to be staked to the ground to hold the pole in place. In 1856, Henry Sibley modified the bell design to add a top vent that allowed smoke to escape and to redesign the outer wall so that fewer guy lines were needed. These redesigned bell tents were called Sibley tents. Photos taken of Civil War encampment during the 1860s show many of these Bell and Sibley tents. One tent could sleep 12 or more men with their heads to the wall and their feet toward the center pole. Today, Bell and Sibley tents can be purchased from Tentsmith and Cabela's. Smaller versions of this tent have been called miners' tents, range tents, and pyramid tents. The A-frame tent is another popular tent style. Many modern camping authorities dismiss A-frame tents as obsolete, but the Eureka Timberline is America's all-time most popular tent and is considered to be the unofficial tent of the Boy Scouts. Although these tents provide limited interior space, they are extremely well ventilated, making them excellent choices for hot summer weather and cool rainy weather camping. In the past, they were also called wedge tents, dog tents, pup tents, and A tents. These French design tents are similar to wall tents, but much smaller. They have a low center ridge and steeply pitched sidewalls supported by two short poles, one at the front and one at the back. Like wall tents, early versions of this tent were non-freestanding that had to be staked to the ground before inserting the support poles. Depending on size, have enough floor space to accommodate two to six sleeping adults, but otherwise have very little interior space. These A-frame tents were widely used during the American Civil War because each soldier could carry half of a tent in his rucksack. At night, he could combine his half with a half of another soldier and they would have a dog tent or pup tent sheltered. In the early 1900s, the English camping pioneer T.H. Holden used this style of tent as his primary shelter during his canoe and bicycle camping trips. Today, the Eureka Tent and Awning Company offers this A-frame tent called the Timberline, in three different durability grades and three different sizes, two-person, four-person, and six-person. And the Big Agnes Scout II is an ultralight version of this tent that uses trekking poles as its support poles. Open front tents is another type of tent that has some degree of popularity today. These tents were very popular during the late 1800s and early 1900s, especially 
with northeastern outdoorsmen and canoe campers. Although they have gradually been replaced by more modern tent designs, many historical reenactors and old-style camping enthusiasts argue that they are still the warmest type of wilderness shelter. Open front tents are non-freestanding, lean-to-like tents that resemble half of a wall tent. They have a large front opening, a sloped back wall, and two side walls. They are supported by a long horizontal pole that extends across the front opening of the tent, and they have a front wall or flap that is usually raised to make an awning. When a campfire is built just beyond the awning, this shelter is reportedly warmer than any other tent design. They were also called lean-to tents, shanty tents, baker tents, campfire tents, and more recently, wheeling tents. In 1854, Henry David Thoreau uh, described this type of tent in his journal, and in Walden, Life in the Woods. In 1906, a photo showed Charles Sheldon using a small lean-to style tent. In 1916, Abercrombie and Fitch catalog offered four variations of this tent, a Baker tent, an Amazon tent, a Mastaguchi tent, and a lean-to tent. And in 1920, Uh, Nesmuk, in his book Camping and Woodcraft, stated that the shanty tent was his favorite design. In 1925, Townsend Whelan redesigned this tent, and his redesigned tent is now called a Whelan tent. Abercrombie and Fitch marketed this tent as Whelan's or the Hunter's lean-to tent, back in the uh, late 1920s. Now let's talk about dome tents. Back in the 1700s and 1800s, several Native American people lived in dome-shaped shelters called wickiups or wigwams. This example was on display at the John Hallberg Indian Museum in Rock Island, Illinois. In the 1960s, the Eureka Tent and Awning Company introduced this draw-tight tent as the first freestanding tent. In the 1970s, Bob Gillis, founder of Shelter Systems, uh, began making geodesic dome tents, and in 1976, Gillis licensed the North Face and Sierra Designs to market his dome tent designs. In 1977, the book Trailside Shelters by Davis stated that several companies were developing lineless tents. In other words, what we would call self-standing or freestanding tents today. Modern dome tents have a rounded, dome-like shape with no defined ceiling. The dome is supported by two or more long, flexible poles that bend diagonally over and across the tent body. This tent design quickly became America's most popular tent design. It was designed for short backpacking trips and was not particularly suited for long-term fixed camps because these tents had limited interior space and were poorly ventilated. Today, there are three types of dome tents. Family dome tents, such as this REI Camp Dome, are taller and have a rain hood that only covers the top and sides of the tent rather than a full coverage rain fly. Backpacking dome tents such as this Marma Den have a full coverage rain fly. Backpackers like them 
because they provide shelter during severe storms that may develop in the backcountry. But they are poorly ventilated and to get, tend to get very warm in hot summer weather. Expedition dome tents, such as this, the North Face VE-25, are designed for cold winter weather and would be poor choices for hot summer camping trips. Tunnel tents began to emerge in the 1960s as the best all-around family camping tent because they offer the greatest amount of interior space and headroom for their weight and pack size. Some are designed to be used in hot summer weather and others are designed to be used in cooler winter weather. These tunnel tents are very popular with European families, but much less popular with American families. Smaller versions of these tents have been called hoop tents. Tunnel tents resemble longhouses that were used by Northeastern Native American people, but they were developed in Europe. They are supported by two or three short flexible poles that extend over and across the width of the tent body. Most of them are non-freestanding and thus require stakes and guy lines to remain upright, but they are very stable in moderate wind. In 1980, the Swedish tent maker Bo Hilleberg introduced the Karen. Today, Good tunnel tents are made by European ma makers Vango, Outwell, and Coleman. Popular American tunnel tents include this REI Kingdom, this MSR Dragon Tail, and this MSR Backcountry Barn. Well, I hope this information gives you a little better background about the different types of tents that are available for sale today. And I hope that you can use this information to select the tent that best fits your particular uh, family needs. For more information about tents and other camping topics, please read my recent book, Basic Tent Camping, and visit my website, www.basic tentcamping.com. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.